really testing uh, and challenging my old brain stories rather than just accepting them became my new game of life. I decided what I wanted from life and I began walking towards it. If I needed something, I would ask for it. If I didn't want to do something, I would say no. I became belligerently honest with myself and everybody around me and I started living my life, not the life that others wanted for me or the life that my old stories were telling me I ought to live up to. So that what I'm saying here is kind of complex, it's also quite simple, especially if you can reorientate your observer awareness from my, fo focusing all the micro details of your inner fears and what makes you anxious into the outer macro view of who do you wish to become and what do you wish to do with your life. As I said in video 44, people who act, then think, then adjust, then act again, will always outperform those who think but don't act, or those who think that only once they understand something fully can they possibly begin to move forward. This is just another of those common sense facts of life anxious people struggle to grasp as they are so identified with and addicted to their thoughts rather than their potential greatness, which will never be revealed unless they're doing real world actions with real life people uh, rather than distracting themselves with drama, YouTube or other people's issues rather than finding their own solutions. Okay, <laughs> so let's kind of regroup and, uh, uh, and, and get back to sensible, positive li uh, life ERP routines. So we look for ways where we become forced to find real world experiential data feedback by exposing ourselves to what the brain and body fear and then preventing ourselves from taking our current avoidant distraction responses to see what will truly happen over and above us just having a noisy brain and a scared body and remaining stuck. If you do these things, you'll be answering the question, did you actually catch that disease? Did you actually harm that person? Yeah. Did that bin actually infect you? Did that family member actually get ill? Did you enjoy kissing that person? Were you actually arrested? Are you gay? Yeah. Was the date more fun than you expected? Uh, did you actually get fired? Uh, did you actually crash your car? Did that animal bite you? Did you get offered the job? <laughs> when you test these stories out, did your worst fears happen? Or what truly did happen when you exposed yourself to those fears and you prevented your old responses from stopping you from taking action, regardless of the brain's thoughts and the body's feelings. This is what normal people have to do each and every day. And what I discovered was life became a lot more engaging. It became a, a lot more exciting as I became part of it rather than trying to control or avoid it. And here's another thing that I really hope that you can understand. There is very little sense in doing exposure therapy on your presenting anxious symptoms, okay, unless they're in the context of expanding your life, because complex anxiety will just move from one symptom to another symptom, and you'll think that unless you can find this, the, the, uh, fix the symptom, you can't get on with your life, but it will just keep moving from one to the other to the other, and you will remain stuck. OCD and anxiety try to keep you away from life. But on the other hand, if you apply ERP to your life, it forces you to face those symptoms, but in the real world. Therefore, you are learning new skills, meeting more people, and you're expanding your life. You could be scared by doing ERP on your symptoms or scared by doing ERP on your life. However, this second way is faster as you develop more skills and you stir up life a bit, thus giving you far more opportunities. And I'm recommending that you rip off the sticking plaster as fast as possible. 
Stop using your dominance, creativity and anger to harm yourself. Instead, learn how to challenge, challenge them and channel them. Use them as a source of energy, leading you to a more authentic life that aligns you with what you do want, rather than focusing on what you don't want. Now, as you rip off that old plaster by engaging with life, by exposing your old cover stories and by looking beneath your brain's conditions and beliefs to finally face your fears, there's one more thing that you need to know. It's my experience that 15 to 20 percent of the Western world's population have some form of complex anxiety. And one of their biggest yet silent frustrations are how slowly and how robotically the other 80% of the people function. Why do other people think so slowly? Why aren't they spontaneous? Why can't they see the obvious? Uh, why does it take them so long to make decisions? Why do they crumble in a true emergency? And why do they deviate from sensible plans and guidelines that would put in place to improve efficiency? And I think this is a big problem. Because if this sounds a bit like you, it will be very hard for you to delegate work to others or be told what to do as you'd probably be able to do those tasks faster and better than most of the people around you. Or perhaps you do have these superpowers, but because they were suppressed or manipulated during your childhood, you unknowingly repressed all your dominance uh, and you repressed all your creativity and now you rigidly follow all the rules to the last letter so that nobody can judge you or criticize you. It's almost like saying you're cutting off your own nose to spite your face, but that anger and that frustration, they have to go somewhere. And they often get pushed down and energetically trapped within your body. Or to use my metaphor, repressed down into the atomic battery of condensed potential energy just waiting to be released. But until it is released, causes inflammation, pain, and that sort of background feeling of fear that you can't quite put your finger on. Whilst at the same time, it's depleting your biological battery with you holding all that energy down and thinking that you have to analyze all your thoughts and worry about everything as you try to figure everything out. Uh, it's exhausting. I mean, you know the story. I've said it a hundred times. But so often, what people with complex anxiety fail to grasp is that beneath all their childhood conditioning, they themselves are the gifted ones, the potential leaders, the rebels, the, the fabric of society, the, the imaginative creators who had that innate aspect of their personality squashed down so they could fit in to the slow and boring life of this other 80% of the population who are just sheepishly doing what they're told or doing what they think is expected from them. Ask yourself, are you using your gift of having an advanced complex personality, okay, and a very, very fast brain and obsessive tendencies to define and live your life or to trap you and keep you stuck? Most complexly anxious people are actually very useful in an emergency. They respond quickly and logically while others flap around. And in those moments, uh, they don't have time to think, so they just respond automatically or with common sense. And normally and usually, they do a really good job. <laughs> think about it, okay? In an emergency, when there isn't time to think, they do really well. But when there's no emergency, they do all the if only worrying about the past and all the what if worrying about the future, and they exhaust themselves with doubt and worry. As I've said before, there is a sense of calmness that can be found within us, even when our bodies are feeling nervous. And this is something that um, soldiers, um, bomb disposal specialists, surgeons, athletes, nurses, mountain climbers, racing drivers, and anybody who rides a motorbike, they know for sure. Although the, their bodies may be experiencing fear or excitement, they can still, to a certain degree, maintain a sense of stillness, composure, self-trust, and intense focus on what they wish to do, which allows them to proceed with their intentions and ignore the brain's fearful thoughts or the body's corresponding emotions. 
And very often, they have an anxiety attack after the emergency, because during the event, they were so laser fo focused on their task in hand that they didn't have time to scare themselves of all the things that, that could go wrong. So they do it to themselves afterwards. Now, I find this both ironic and sadly distressing because it's so unnecessary. That behavior is only the result of their conditioned brain and body doing what it was programmed to do in early life. We are simply and unconsciously being run by the programs that we were programmed with. So to reprogram these programs, you have to be willing to put in the effort to endure temporary discomfort and to tolerate the repetition of a new, more positive, optimistic and intentions based I story and according behaviors. But most importantly, you'll have to learn how to consciously and willingly suspend many of your brain's existing beliefs, which you think are yours, long enough to explore new knowledge, new values, and new beliefs, and new perspectives that your conditioned brain were trained to reject in childhood because they were not scientific and because they were not provable. Yet many work really efficiently, which of course is what this course is about, is teaching you what they all are. I guess the most um, obvious and simplistic example I can think of about a belief system is a person with type 2 diabetes unconsciously having a we must eat five fruit and veg a day a belief system running in their brain when eating carbs and sugars are the very core of their largely reversible metabolic dysfunction. As I keep saying, common sense is now so uncommon that when it's seen, it's almost so unbelievable that our belief system dismisses it, even though our intuition is screaming at us to listen because it knows something's wrong here, but it can hear something might be wrong right out there. So many of our great teachers, they say the same thing. They say, actually, life is really funny. They <laughs> say, uh, life is a big game, okay? And the world needs to be all messed up. Otherwise, how would we have these challenges and how can we learn anything? They say, once you wake up and can see how things really work in that outer world, as opposed to how you were taught they work. And once you can acknowledge that though your animal body and its brain will die, you can't die because you are the energy of conscious awareness and energy can't be destroyed. It lives forever, um, and that energy holds information. And the great teachers, they say, once you can see all this, or certainly if you can program it into your unconscious brain, life becomes reasonably easy. And at that point, it's quite sad, but also funny to watch those who haven't figured it out yet, because they exhaust themselves clinging to stories, which are the very things that are stopping them from having a calmer, healthier, and a richer life. And they say, there's nothing you can do to help them, okay, um, because they don't listen, okay, because they are so deeply ingrained in what they believe is right, and they rigidly cling to those old values and those old beliefs and the, their old stories as though that they were theirs, even though that's what was programmed into them from parents, school, culture, religion, TV, social media, corporations and governments. Think about it. Why do you have to be good? Um, why do you have to save the planet? Why do you have to follow rules? Uh, why do you have to do as you're told? Uh, why should you play it safe? Uh, why should you work hard? Why do you have to work at all? You know, why should you pay taxes? I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do these things. I'm saying these are the questions that you can ask yourself. Surely as an adult, you can now choose who you wish to become and what you desire to do and then program that into your brain that wasn't able to do it for itself when it was young. So you had to accept somebody else's dream until you're old enough and wise enough to choose the dream you want and then to program it in to your little brain body meat suit. 